So on behalf of the Spanish myeloma group, I'm going to present a summary of the results of the assessment of treatment response by immune fixation, next generation flow and mass spectrometry coupled with liquid chromatography in patients enrolled in the Gen 2012 menos 65 clinical trial. So the prognostic value of reaching MSD negativity has been corroborated, as you know, in the group of newly diagnosed transplant eligible multiple myeloma patients included in the GEM 2012 trial, both in terms of progression, pre-survival and overall survival. So this value is further highlighted by the fact that as you can see in the slide post-consolidation, the different categories of the standard response did not differentiate groups of patients with different outcomes. However, the analysis of MAD in the BOMAR of patients with myeloma is associated with limitations due to the impossibility of performing frequent aspirates, as well as the likelihood of false negative results related to the patchy infiltration, hemodiluted samples, and extramedullary disease. So the use of peripheral blood has emerged as an alternative to bone marrow that would theoretically avoid such limitations. And in fact, its value as a source for MRD analysis is already being explored by NGF, NGS, and mass spectrometry, including the results that, that we are going to present today. So 458 newly diagnosed transplant eligible multiple myeloma patients enrolled in the GEM 2012-65 trial received six cycles of induction with VAD, high dose therapy, anatologous stem cell transplantation, and two further cycles of VAD as consolidation. So post consolidation, the M protein was analyzed in serum by conventional immune fixation and mass spectrometry using IgG, AM, Kappa Lambda, Free Kappa, and Free Lambda ISOTP kits and sample considered negative by mass spectrometry were reanalyzed afterwards after performing a liquid chromatography. So in parallel, the presence of clonal plasma cells in bone marrow was investigated by next generation flow following the Euroflow guidelines. And in this study, we have analyzed bone marrow and peripheral blood pair samples from the first 164 patients enrolled in the trial. So post-consolidation, immune fixation identified the presence of persistent disease in 25% of patients, mass spectrometry in 34%, and NGF in 43%. So surprisingly, the presence or, or absence of detectable disease by immune fixation lacked prognostic value, but the results of mass spectrometry and NGF were able to segregate two groups of patients with a significantly different progression pre survival. And most importantly, we observed that among patients in CR or IFE negative, both mass spectrometry and NGF were able to distinguish two cohorts of patients with significantly different progression free survival. So when we focus on the results obtained with mass spectrometry and NGF, we found that 76% when cohort were concordant and 24% discordant. Discordance is mainly due to NGF positive and mass spectrometry negative cases. And when we compare patients' progression free survival according to the combined results of both methods, we learned that the three comparisons reaching a statistical significance were the obvious between double positive and double negative cases, double positive versus mass spectrometry positive NGF negative cases, and double negative versus mass spectrometry negative NGF positive cases in the purple and green curves. Or in other words, the negative predictive value of mass spectrometry considering NGF as a reference was 74% overall. Stratifying the results of mass spectrometry by log levels of MAD by NGF, as you can see in the slide, that is in equal or higher than 10 to the minus four, between 10 to the minus four and 10 to the minus five, and equal or higher than 10 to the minus six, the negative predictive value was 96%, 89%, and 84% respectively. So the 100 and, uh, 108 samples deemed negative by mass spectrometry were reanalyzed after performing a liquid chromatography beforehand. So the monoclonal protein could be identified in 63 of them, and therefore 119 samples out of the 164 analyzed, that means 73% of them were considered positive using liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, and mass spectrometry. So following a similar schema of analysis as earlier, we first confirmed that liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry segregated two groups of patients with a significantly different PFS. Then we focused on the results obtained with liquid chromatography and NGF, and found that now 65% of them were concordant and three 
and sorry, and uh, thirty five percent discordant. Discordances mainly due to cases liquid chromatography mass spectrometry positive versus NGF negative. Again, we compare pre patients' progression pre survival according to the combined results of both methods, learning now that only the comparison reaching, the only comparison reaching a statistical significance apart from the obvious between double positive and double negative cases was between double positive versus liquid chromatography mass spectrometry positive and GF negative cases represented in the blue and red curves. Or in other words, the negative predictive value of liquid chromatography mass spectrometry considering NGF as a reference was 89% overall and stratifying the results of mass spectrometry by log levels of MRT by NGF, 100% in MRT levels um, higher than 10 to the minus four, 100% between 10 to the minus four and 10 to the minus five, and 89% in um, higher than 10 to the minus six cases. So in conclusion, the use of IFE post-consolidation in patients with myeloma in this study, as opposed to mass spectrometry and NGF, did not identify patients with different progression free survival. When compared to NGF, mass spectrometry provided a similar clinical value and displayed a very high negative predictive value, increased further with the addition of liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. So this could be used to avoid the performance of, of a formal respiration or biopsy after treatment in patients with undetectable disease. So regarding mass spectrometry positive and or liquid chromatography mass spectrometry positive cases, future quantitative and sequential studies could reveal whether they are due to the long half lives of, half lives of the M proteins or represent quiescent low level disease. So think, uh, we, I would like to thank all the participants, centers, investigators, patients, and all of you for your very kind attention. Uh, thank you very much.